Hi everyone, thank you for joining us in this experiment. To prep for our cabbage pH indicator solution experiment, we are going to have to cut up some cabbage to extract the special chemical in it called anthocyanin that gives it its really deep red purple pigment. What we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to cut up that cabbage and then prep it to extract it um, so that we can have that solution in order to use it for our experiment today. So first you have to make sure that you have your cabbage. You probably won't need all this cabbage. Depending on how many students are doing it, you can adjust it that way. You'll need a knife, pretty sharp knife that's able to cut through a head of cabbage. You'll need a hot plate or just like um, a stove or a hot surface, as well as a large container. I'm using a beaker in the lab, um, but at home you can use a pot. Um, these are all safe ingredients so you don't have to worry about contaminating anything. You'll also need a strainer as well as some water. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to take this sleeve off of the knife and then I'm just going to chop the cabin. Another option is to use a blender or a food processor, a chopper of some sort, but just be careful when you are using the blender because you don't necessarily want to blend your cabbage, you just want to cut it up into smaller pieces so that when you boil it, um, you're able to extract the, the anthocyanin a lot better. So that should be just about enough. We are gonna be working with a smaller volume of our solution. So I'm really only gonna use about 15 mils per solution that we're testing the pH with. Um, so we won't need that much cabbage. But as you can see, this cabbage has a very rich, dark purple color, and we want that pigment, right? We wanna extract that pigment, so we will need a good amount of cabbage. Now I know some of you guys are younger, so I would suggest having your parents help you with the cutting portion. Please be safe when you are cutting. Make sure that you are not too close to your fingers. Make sure that you are always watching while you are cutting. And you just have to make sure that you're safe. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna speed this part up so that you guys can see how I'm cutting it. all cut up what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick it up oh do not forget to put your knife back into its sheath always practice precaution when using sharp objects so once I put this sheath back on um, on my knife I'm gonna place it away from me so I'm gonna grab my cabbage and I'm going to put it into my beaker you guys at home would most likely have a pot so I'm gonna put all my chopped up cabbage. And then I want to take my water and I wanna pour enough water just so that it covers the cabbage. Okay, so we're gonna bring that to a boil We're gonna let that heat up until it's about boiling. 
And then after it's done boiling, I'll come back and show you guys what we're going to do with the anthocyanin that we have now extracted. So our cabbage pH indicator solution is boiling. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off our hot plate. Then, using our gloves, I'm going to remove the hot beaker from the hot plate and let it cool down. While our anthocyanin was heating up, I did grab a new beaker so that I can pour our solution into the beaker. I also grabbed a bottle so that I can pour the solution that's in the new beaker into the bottle to preserve it for our experiment coming up. And right now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move this hot plate because you never want to work near really warm surfaces. So I'm just going to keep the hot plate there and then we have our gloves, our bottle for our solution, our hot beaker, I will not touch it, um, our new beaker, and our strainer. So using the gloves, I'm going to take hot beaker and pour our anthocyanin indicator solution into the strainer so that it can catch our cabbage pieces. And you want to be super careful not to spill anything. even squeeze some of the excess juices out as well. Got some cabbage on my beaker. <laughs> okay. So after that solution has been transferred to the new beaker, I will let our solution sit so that it can cool down at room temperature. When it is cooled down, then we can pour it into our bottle, refrigerate it, and save it for our experiment coming up, okay? So our cabbage pH indicator solution has cooled down. So all we need to do is transfer it from this beaker into this bottle. So my beaker luckily has a lip so it makes it easier to pour it into the bottle. You guys at home may not have a beaker, so if you are using a pot or a bowl, I would suggest using a funnel to transfer the liquid into the bottle. And then once you get your solution in the bottle, you want to close it tight. You also want to make sure that you label your cabbage pH indicator solution because if you're going to put it in the fridge, you don't want someone to confuse it with grape juice and when they try to drink it, it's just boiled cabbage, right? So you want to make sure that you label it and in order to preserve it, you can also put a little bit of isopropanol alcohol or isopropanol. So I'm gonna cabbage solution. So now I'm going to, after I've labeled my bottle, oh, and you wanna date it. After I have 
labeled and dated my bottle. I will now put it in the fridge and use it for our experiment when we're ready.